check out the library's YouTube channel. That's where we upload all of the recordings of our workshops. Hi there, welcome. <laughs> check in to make sure you're in the right place. <laughs> um, so with that being said, uh, it's 12.02. To be respectful of everybody's time, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're going over the database called SAGE Research Methods. So just kind of to introduce, um, my name is Sarah Norrell. I am the business librarian here. My pronouns are she and her. And you can see um, my email address is up on the screen, snorrell at uttyler.edu. Um, I'm here with my wonderful colleague, Nick Bambach, and he will also be uh, on the screen here in just a moment. But uh, his contact information is also here, and he is our history and social sciences librarian. So we utilize um, this uh, database quite often um, in our fields. So just a little bit about uh, SAGE research methods. I know there's a lot on this screen. Um, please don't um, you know, don't let your eyes gloss over anything like that, but it's just a little bit about um, SAGE research methods. So uh, basically this database, it's not really one that you think of as like, um, I'm going to find scholarly research articles or, um, you know, resources to support my paper. This database is all about helping you understand the research process, all of the stages of the research process. So you can kind of think of this database as a library in itself. Um, and this library um, provides uh, tons of different types of information and resources, including different books, um, different um, video tutorials, interviews with practitioners, um, cases, if you are a faculty and you're wanting to kind of teach from a case, or if you're still learning about the research process as a student and you wanna see how the research um, steps or methods work, you know, in real life, right, or in real examples, that's what those cases are also good for. Data sets, um, which are nice because you can just go in and practice uh, or learn about data analysis in, um, excuse me, within the research process. And then there's also this really great interactive methods map. Um, and that will kind of walk you through um, the different uh, areas or steps in the research process and help you to narrow down, um, you know, if you have a research uh, topic or you have an idea and you're trying to figure out what is most appropriate or which avenue you should take, that methods map will be um, a really great and fantastic tool for you. The other really great thing that I like to point out about SAGE research methods it is focused in the social sciences. Um, that's where you know the content material um, mainly stems from. However, um, we all I'm sure know that research methods are you know pretty consistent across any field. And so while some of the content may be focused in the social sciences, they will have information and resources that are going to be valuable to literally any field. And they have resources that are easy for, you know, first time beginners have no idea anything about the research process whatsoever, all the way to, you know, experienced practitioners or faculty who are working to teach research methods to their students. Um, so this database is really great about meeting its users wherever they are in their knowledge or research process. Okay. And with that, I am going to back out of our screen here, and I'm going to go to the library's website. And from here, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Nick, and he is going to actually um, get into the database and show you guys what it's all about. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for that introduction. My name is uh, Nick Bambeck, and I am the History and Social Sciences Librarian here at UT Tyler's Robert R. Muntz Library. So today I'm going to be talking about SAGE Research Methods, which is a fantastic database. Uh, it's a database that is one that you use to learn how to conduct research and how to um, do, you know, um, learn more about it. And what's great about SAGE Research Methods is, like Sarah said, it's good for researchers at all levels, um, introductory, um, like students, like graduate students or undergraduate students, but also faculty members as well. Uh, 
to get started, we're going to be looking at the library homepage and we're going to look for databases by title, which is underneath the swoop search tool. We're going to click on that link right there. And from there, you will see our listing of databases uh, that we have subscriptions to. The easiest way to find Sage research methods is by clicking the letter S. And it's the second database that is listed. Uh, just, just for um, people who are listening to this uh, workshop, Sage Journals is where you're going to find peer-reviewed journal publications and books and information like that. So if you're looking more for research to use in your uh, papers or works, that's where you would consult uh, Sage Journals. But for our purposes, we're going to be looking at Sage Research Methods because it's just a way for us to understand those concepts and methodologies and terms to help us grow as researchers. So let's click on Sage Research Methods. And from there, I just want to do a overview of the library, I'm sorry, of the Sage Research Methods uh, homepage. So first thing I just want to take note of is the browse by. And if I click on it, it'll show me all the disciplines or subjects that are offered um, in this database that you can learn about. So like Sarah said, it's mainly on the social sciences. That's the majority of subjects that are offered here. But there's also really valuable uh, tools and resources and features on subjects such as education, any of the STEM uh, fields or um, subjects, uh, marketing, business, history, and education. So it's a, there's a lot of really great um, information just on these specific subjects. Um, and then you can also look at the content type. Now, for these, there's way more uh, resource and content types that are listed, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But some of the major ones are books and reference works. Um, and case studies and data sets and podcasts and videos. We're gonna go over this um, much more in depth, but these are some of the interactive tools and features that are used in Sage Research Methods. Um, so we're gonna go over method maps, uh, project planner, which that's test and read in list. So this will kind of get back to that in a few minutes. Um, here is where you're, you could just do a search for terms or items in this database. And if you want to look at a specific type of resource, you click on the Dropbox search all content right here, and it gives you all of the different types of uh, resources that we have in this um, database. I What I really like about Sage Research Methods is that there's such a diversity and uh, of resources that are offered here. So for students who maybe learn differently, there's videos on, there's videos, there's podcasts, there's handbooks, encyclopedias, books, and so on that could help you learn. So that's actually really one of the great things about this database is that everyone learns differently and there's all sorts of, of resources that could help you with that as well. And you could also use the advanced search option right here as well to, uh, if you wanted to look at, you know, something a little bit more in depth or you wanted to narrow it down a little bit uh, more, um, but the most important thing I want to showcase on the homepage is the My Profile. And I highly recommend in this database, if you're going to learn it or use it a lot, uh, make sure that you create an account. It's just really, really imperative to do that. Um, so to, to do that, you click My Profile. And if you haven't already registered for an account, you could create an account here. And if you already do have an account like I do, you type in your information. And I'm logged in, which is great. So sorry about that. Um, so I so I create so I logged into my account and it says that I'm uh, Nicholas, which that is who I am. So to access my account, I would click on my name and I'm going to view my profile. 
And from here, you can see that you can create lists, um, which are in folder format. And what's really great about this is that you could create lists based on your uh, ongoing research and maybe you want to break it up differently, especially if you're focused on various different types of research within your project. So like, for example, I have like a lit review for one and I have focus groups as another and maybe one in my subject like communication studies. And what's great about this is you can make your list public for other users to see that have profiles on Sage research methods, or you can make them private as well. And uh, we'll go over that in a little bit when we get to read-in lists, but what's really important is um, also that you could save your searches on um, this database. So like if, if you're finding a lot of really wonderful results on say lit review or focus groups, you could go into your search and there's a way to like it or heart it, and then it'll appear here. I just think that that's really helpful if you just wanted to go back into your search. So like, for example, if I click on lit, lit, lit review, for example, it'll take me to my uh, search results here. And if I if I did any filters on the left-hand side, I could also, um, it, that'll show up if I, if I do save it from there as well. So it's really, really important to do that. Um, now, I did also want to take note of if you scroll down, the I want to explore. These are just some of the uh, most used resources or most asked for sources. So, like I said before, like books, cases, data sets, podcasts, and videos, they're listed in, as boxes here. If you keep scrolling down, likewise, all the interactive tools that we're going to be going over are listed as boxes as well. For our purposes, we're going to start with methods map. Methods map is a way for you to understand the relationships between method methods and concepts. It's an interactive tool that helps you explore those relationships between terms, concepts, methods that are found within this database. So I'm going to click on uh, methods map, and it's going to give you like this visualization, right? So we're going to get started um, and. The first thing I'm going to show you is research methods, because that is at its core of what this database is all about, is learning about research methods. And what's great about it is that in green, that means that's the term that you search for. And then it could break it down to broader, related, and narrower terms. What's also really great is that it gives you a one sentence definition of what that term or concept is. So if you're not familiar with it, it breaks it down and it's um, really helpful, especially if you're not sure what it is. So I have research methods, but I want to take it a step further. And I'm looking on the right-hand side for my narrower terms. And I'm really interested in planning research because I'm kind of at the introductory stages of my research project. So I'm going to be clicking on planning research. And it gives me a definition of what is planning research. And it takes a... Um, a little bit broader, which we want to kind of usually take it a step forward with our narrower terms um, because it's research skills and then the related terms like practitioner uh, research and research impact. You know, those are good, but maybe we want to look at one of these. And I'm really interested in how to write a literature review because my instructor might have asked me to do one and I have no idea what that is. So I click on literature review and notice how it gives you this map. And so it's gonna to continue to like connect it to those concepts and theories and methods. And it gives me a uh, definition of literature review. I read it and I say, wow, this is exactly what I need. Now for me to search in Sage research methods for all the content on literature reviews, I click on this hyperlink that's search all content on literature review and it populates the results and it gives me 157 results just on this particular method and now like i said it's really wonderful how um interactive and diverse the sources are so like it starts with like videos like designing your literature review it's only four minutes how to do a literature review 
like six minutes. So these are very short videos for the most part. They could be a little bit longer, but that's one of the things I like about this database is that everything's very compartmentalized and it's done so, so you could pick up what you need and move on. And of course, learn what you need to learn to be successful in your projects. So you, so you kind of look at these videos, you look at the results and you're like, okay, this is fantastic. And also, I should also know too that um, it's going to sort by what they think are the most relevant um, resources from this method that you chose. So you could also click that Dropbox and you could sort it by alphabetical order. You could pick what's the most recent uh, additions to the database or what's the most popular. So if like what you're looking for they might be something different, always check the sort by option. And if you want to save the search history like maybe we do, um, we'll just name it something. So we'll just say literature review resources. So now it's saved in my profile. So if I do want to look at it later, I can do that as well. And on this um, particular uh, results, I want to just pay attention to the filters on the left-hand side. You can narrow it down to any type of resource that is available in Sage Research Methods. And you could also narrow it down to a specific discipline or subject as well. And there's about two dozen or so options to do that. And you could do it by products, which as an FYI to, uh, to people who are listening, it's only Sage publications that are in this database. You're not gonna find anything else other than Sage because they're, it's their database. And also if you needed a, a publication date range as well. Now it's a little bit hidden on some of the updates for Sage Research Methods, but you could search within um, the results. So like if you wanted to look up, so maybe take a step further and say you wanted to look up um, like um, something about a bibliography. So by doing that, we narrowed it down to 21 results that is about bibliographies. So it's just a way for you to kind of um, search within to maybe find maybe more of what you're trying to like learn or use for your own projects. And I always just mention the search within because it's a little bit hidden. It used to be up top, so it's very easy to, um, to miss it. Um, so methods map is fantastic. It just helps you connect the dots for all the, um, the concepts and terms and methods that you might need to learn for your projects. The next one I just want to focus on is project planner, which is essentially a, um, a roadmap of how to complete your research project. It provides a step-by-step -step guidance um, and there's about, I would say, nine or 10 steps that it will um, show you on the left-hand side. Now, what's great about Project Planner is I think you should use this if you're doing any type of research project or paper because it more or less shows you how to go from start to finish. And really, for this type of of um tool, you really don't want to necessarily skip any steps or miss anything because that could actually be a detriment to your project. And it might actually cause you to do more work later on. So like, for example, like a good one is like defining your topic, like you're observing, you're not quite sure what you want to do. So you're kind of like trying to just do some preliminary research on your end. But what's good also is like you could skip ahead. So maybe like you're a little bit ahead of the game, like you already kind of know what your topic is but you need information about literature reviews. So they actually have one on reviewing the literature. And if you click on it, it gives you an introduction. And I, I always make this joke every time I teach this class and I will do it here. It's not David Byrne of the Talking Heads. We want to think it's David Byrne, but it's not, even though he's amazing. Um, and what you could do is uh, see that they constantly update this too. That that's one of the great things about this database is that they they are very on top of making sure that the information is current, relevant, and topical. And I think that that's really important for researchers, especially in the social sciences or STEM or any of the other ones that are listed, because you do need that for your projects and papers. It'll give you an introduction of like what you should be expecting to learn 
in this section on literature reviews. And notice that they're always in like bullet point form. And if you click on a section, like I'm gonna just click on, why do I need a literature review? Oops. Um, it's like one paragraph or a few paragraphs, but they're very compartmentalized. And I always think of them as like to go, like you're, you just want to kind of get what you need, learn about it and move on kind of. And I think that that's really, really um, important. And I think for faculty members, what's really great about this is like, if you wanted to add this to your Canva or Canvas class, um, you can embed specific sections or resources into your Canvas classes, and they'll give you the link where you could put that in and uh, apply that to your classes. I think that's really important, especially more research heavy classes. Like if you're teaching a research methods class, I think that that's very, very important for the students to know. And like I said, you're not really like giving them like a 20 page paper. It's just like two paragraphs and you can kind of jump ahead and you could kind of see if any of this is applicable. Um, maybe not on this one, but a lot of the sections, there's usually like checklists at the end that should uh, have the user asking themselves about, say, literature reviews. Um, and I think that that's really, really important. And if I click on another one, like what is gray literature? Or maybe not. Or there we go. Um, sometimes they'll have like hyperlinks within. So like if you're not really sure of like what something is, it's all like about connecting the dots. So like if you're not sure of like uh, literature searches and you, you're like, okay, let's click on that. It'll take you to methods map where it will tell you about uh, what is it and then how it connects to other concepts and methods. And then you could of course search for that on the database too. So that interactiveness and connecting dots is super, super important, especially if you're not sure of how something works. Uh, just to go back to a method in um, Project Planner for a second, I think what's really fantastic too is that, like I said, it takes you through every step of the research process and really you can jump ahead to any section, but also um, it's, it kind of gives you a roadmap of how you should approach your projects and papers. Like, you know, maybe like you need to learn more about data collection and you just want to jump to data collection, but you shouldn't skip necessarily any of these steps. They're absolutely vital for you to be successful um, and conquer those um, projects. But Project Planner is a wonderful companion for any, any of classes or assignments or scholarship that you're trying to um, do. The next tool I just want to focus on is the uh, Witch Stats test. And the Witch Stats test essentially is um, a tool that helps you choose the right statistical test for your data analysis. It guides you through the questions on the number and the type of variables you have and the type of comparison you're trying to conduct. If you aren't sure how to answer a question, there's always hyperlinks available that will help clarify any of the information. And that's what's really good about Sage Research Methods too, is that if you're not sure of something, they're always gonna give you a resource so you can learn about it. So it never leaves you in the cold necessarily. And I think that's really important because you're, you're trying to learn or relearn some of this information. So the fact that they keep giving you uh, guidance on where to go if you're not sure of how something works or how it goes, there's always hyperlinks. I always uh, tell students that this is a really great uh, tool to use if you wanna learn more about how uh, data analysis works and also if you're not sure which one to use. And usually it's about three to five questions. It just depends on how you answer them. And they're always in multiple choice format. And then it generates a test for you and it'll give you a recommended test. And if you're not sure what the test is, it'll provide you with um, examples of that as well. So it's really, really wonderful. Uh, the last tool I want to focus on is uh, reading lists, which we talked a little bit about before. And basically what reading lists are, like we created our profile and it just allows us to kind of add content that is relevant to our research projects. And more importantly, it allows me to share my lists, not only with 
people who have uh, accounts on this database, but also maybe my classmates or my instructors or someone I'm collaborating with. So I'm gonna show everyone how to do that. So I'm gonna go to my profile and I'm gonna go back to the read, read in list in a second. But like, for example, if I'm in my um, profile, I started adding things for my literature review because I got to write one for one of my classes maybe. And I have five resources here and it tells me when I last updated it. But if I want to share it with someone, I click this uh, button right here and then I could fill out all the required fields like the person's email address, my name, because they might be like, who is this person? Um, a subject is always wonderful. And then it always gives you the option to send yourself a copy, which is really helpful because you may not know sometimes if it actually goes through. Um, and that's just, or you might forget, as Sarah said, that's absolutely important. So I like that they give you that option to send yourself a copy, especially when it's something that's like academic based and related. I think that that's super helpful. But there's also various ways like you could text, <laughs> you could have a QR code to it, you could have social media um, icons that you could send it to as well, or link or, or um, other ones as well. So I think that's fantastic. Also, I should have said this earlier, but what's great too about um, this database is that it allows you to put the size of the text up a little bit more. Like usually they start with medium, but if you want a little bit smaller or you want a little bit larger, you could do as well. So that gives you that flexibility as well. And then you could also have the permalink to your page as well. I always think personally it's e easier just to share it with someone than to send them the link, um, but that's just me. So on read and list too, I, I just wanna show everyone really quick. If I found a book like, you know, Sage Encyclopedia of Communication Research Methods, like that seems like a fantastic resource for me and I'm in this particular book, what's really fantastic is that it gives you the content, which is all the um, like information about the book. It gives you a, a reader's guide and also gives you encyclopedic entries as well. So like if you wanted like a specific concept that you were trying to look at, say in communication studies, you can kind of click on it. So if like we wanted to learn more about say activism and uh, social justice, for example, it just takes us right to that page and it's fantastic. And if you're wondering too about citing the source hypothetically, it will show you the page numbers too on the page as well. And usually it's somewhere here. Yeah, like page 12, for example. So it's really, really fantastic. And you could also search within this chapter um, as well, if you want to look up a specific keyword, um, and you can download it as PDF, you could embed this entire um, encyclopedic entry, for example, as um, you want to as an instructor on your Canvas classes as well. And this is probably a better example of the text being a little bit bigger. So like it stands out a little bit more. I know I need a large text, as a, especially now as I get older. Um, and then they have on this page right here, the um, the table of contents within this uh, particular um, encyclopedic entry. Um, so yeah, that's one way to do that. So I'm gonna go back to my profile for read and list for a second. And if you're curious ever about um, other people's read and lists, like you're like, I wonder what other researchers are like ha having in their own read and lists or folders. What you could do is you can click on this link that's called browse public read and lists. And it gives you like thousands and thousands and thousands of results. See, I was the very last person to update my thing. So it'll say you, and that means me. And uh, it'll say exactly what types of resources that I added. But what's really fantastic is like you could um, enter search terms here if you want to look up a specific method or you can click on methods and it gives you a lot because there's hundreds and hundreds. So maybe you want to use the search terms <laughs> to make it a little bit easier for you. But if you want to look up a specific discipline or subject, that might be a little bit easier and maybe a little bit more relevant to your studies. So I'm like, for example, if I want to narrow it down to just communication and media studies, I apply the filter and it'll give me, well, that didn't take me down nearly as much as I wanted to, but it will tell me all the lists that are relevant to say uh, that subject. And you can also uh, increase the number of results per page and you can look at 
the last time that it was updated or if you want to look up someone's name or which I don't know how you, you know, because it's like, it's global. So you could see people from all over the world, their, um, their list. But yeah, it's just really fantastic if you want to just look to see who else or like basically what other researchers are adding to their list. And maybe that can inspire your own. So I think especially um, academia, it's like all, always an ongoing conversation and dialogue. So it's really, really important for them to not only communicate with each other, but to kind of learn from each other, especially about the, uh, methods and methodologies that they are uh, using. So uh, yeah, Sage Research Methods is one of those databases that I think is fantastic for everyone to use. And regardless of the subject or major that you are in, you will always learn something. And I think that that's really, really what it boils down to. It's just a, a way for you to learn about these methods and methodologies and the major concepts, theories, and um, things that are related to that to help you become a better researcher and scholar. Uh, so I'm going to take it back to Sarah Norrell. Hello, everyone. Sarah here again. Um, I'm just going to go back into our slides um, and open it up for questions. And of course, this also opens it up if you'd like anything to be repeated, we can also show you again in the database itself. I'm gonna silently count to like 10 to myself because I wanna make sure that I give everybody time to ask questions or enter them into the chat if you would prefer. There is one thing I do want to mention is that for faculty members, there are there's also information about how how to write grants on Sage Research Methods if they're curious about that, and also how to publish. Okay, that's really really uh, something else I should probably add to in case if they're curious about that as well. Absolutely. Um, and did was everybody able to hear uh, Nick follow up with that information for faculty members? Um, okay, uh, we have someone who said uh, they didn't see the information on creating a profile. Um, that's no problem. I'll show them again um, as soon as I get out of the whoops, slideshow. There we go. Okay. So either way. Um, so this is the home, like the home page or the home screen of Sage Research Methods. And what you want to do, um, actually, you know what? Nick is already signed in, so I'm going to sign him out. And this is what you should see whenever you access the database from the library's website. Um, now, to create your profile, you go up here to where it says My Profile. You should already be seeing, it should say like the University of Texas at Tyler. That's perfect. You don't have to mess with that in any way. That just shows that it is identifying you as a member of UT Tyler, which is exactly what we want. Um, but if you click on my profile, and so then you have these options. Um, if you already have a profile, you can log in right here. If you don't have a profile, you go down here and click create my profile. Now, I do just want to point out um, when creating this profile, and Nick may have already talked about this earlier, but um, just keep in mind that this is your profile, right? So you decide what credentials or information you use to create this profile. Um, the library, the university doesn't have any access to what say your password is or what email you use. So um, make sure that you either write it down or use some credentials that you will remember because if you um, forget, we can't help you, you know, crack into your profile. Um, we would have to reach out to Sage Research Methods customer support for that. Um, so just a little forewarning because um, I've been that person who's locked myself out of a database before and it's never fun. Um, anyway, and then you just kind of go through um, and you can choose, are you a professional? Are you a teacher, student? I'm a librarian, you know, things like that. And then you can choose, um, honestly, I would opt out of promotional materials, but that's completely up to you. And then you click save. Um, did that uh, answer your question on Zoom? Uh, 
Um, and while they are letting me know whether or not that fully answered their question, we did get a, another question in the chat. Um, as he asks, do we know if there are any other research methods types sources outside of SAGE? Uh, you're very welcome, Adam. Um, nothing in particular is coming to mind in terms of the databases that we subscribe to in the library. Um, of course, we have a lot of databases, and so I don't want to make like a blanket statement and just say no. Um, there's very much the chance, but that would take some investigation, and I think um, would probably be best on like a case-by-case -case basis, um, especially like a subject-specific kind of basis. So Absolutely, and yeah. especially with some like APA psych info where some of those databases still, you can narrow it down to a specific type of method or methodology. Mm -hmm. But in terms of learning about the methods, the only one that I'm familiar Another with and yeah. know of is this one. Yeah, I absolutely agree with Nick. All right. Any other questions or comments? Any, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got plenty of time. Um, this is really a fantastic database. Um, I know uh, Nick teaches it a lot with his students and faculty. I do as well with business, um, especially um, especially faculty who are uh, teaching a research methods course and especially um, those higher level, you know, graduate um, courses and things like that. This really allows um, an instructor to assign and share um, materials so that their students can learn about research method, particular research methods more in depth without them having to say, create instructional material, you know, from scratch or um, go out and kind of curate their own, you know, pieces and things like that. Um, it's a nice kind of all in one and it's very accessible um, and it's very um, interactive, which I think is great. Something that uh, for faculty members as well that I think is really important is there's so many encyclopedias and handbooks and guides. So a lot of, a few faculty members have asked me about adopting some of these books that we have mm -hmm. into their own classes, especially if they're going to be frequently using it. So I highly recommend, especially for faculty and staff to check out, especially the books and like resources that are on this database because they could use it in especially the research heavy classes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, just before we end, I'm going to go in and um, share a link again in the chat. Um, I did mention um, at the very beginning if you are interested in um, entering into our workshop rewards program, which is completely free, all you have to do is click on this link, um, then uh, you know, go ahead and do so now. You don't have to do anything else after you click on the link um, and you'll be entered into a prize drawing. Um, so there is that link one more time. And at this point, uh, we're still open for questions, of course, but I am going to go ahead and put our con like library contact information out there, um, our phone number, our email address, and of course, the library's website. Um, and I mentioned um, at the beginning that this workshop is being recorded. All of our workshops are recorded. So if you miss one or if you just want to revisit what we've talked about today, um, check out our YouTube channel because that's where we put all of our uh, recorded workshops. You can just go on to YouTube and search for Months Library um, or you can just Google Months Library uh, YouTube, whatever is easiest for you. We're also on social media in case you want to keep up with other events or workshops that are coming down the line. So we thank everybody very much for joining us and hope that this was a helpful database uh, overview. Chat, you're so welcome, Christine. All right. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? <laughs> All right. So at this point, I am going to stop sharing and I'm also going to stop recording.